Hi Spring fans, welcome to another installment of Spring Tips. In today's installment, we're going to take a look at the popular Kotlin Exposed ORM library. It's called Exposed. It's an ORM library written in and serving the Kotlin community. Uh, it's an amazing piece of technology that I first looked at when I first introduced Kotlin in one of the earliest Spring Tips installments years and years ago, I think 2016 or 15, something like that. Back then it just offered Spring support, but it has since sprouted a really nice Spring Boot starter and integration, and it's even been updated to work with Spring Boot 3.0, and so I think it's just a very interesting technology. Let's take a look at it. We're gonna go and build a brand new application today using Gradle and Kotlin, of course. You could use the other ones, it doesn't really matter, but why wouldn't we use Kotlin if we could? Um, we're gonna create a service, I'll just call it Exposed, using Java 21 because ultimately behind the scenes, this ORM uses JDBC, which of course benefits from virtual threads. We're gonna add the Postgres support. We're gonna add the Gravium native image support. We'll add Docker Compose support to get it to generate a Postgres Docker container for us. And of course, we're gonna add JDBC support. All right, I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and hit generate and open this up in our IDE. You might have noticed that we didn't add exposed on the spring initializer because it's not there, but we'll do that ourselves manually in the build like this. There it is, I've just added it. It's uh, 0480 as of the recording. It's the org JetBrains exposed, exposed Spring Boot starter, okay? So we've got that in the class path now, and now we can return to our code. Okay, so public static void main. Uh, we're gonna have a Spring Boot application. Uh, remember, our Spring Boot application is gonna talk to a SQL database, which we've specified here in our Docker Compose YAML file. I want to disable Spring Boot's Docker Compose support. I just wanted the Docker Compose file, and so I'll, I'll go back to the build and comment out this dependency, Command Shift I to force it to re-import. And now we've got this Docker Compose file. I'll go ahead and start it up in my local machine. All right, it's running in the background there, great. Now I wanna connect our application, since we've just disabled the Spring Boot Docker Compose support, I wanna connect the application to that, so Spring Data Source Secret is the password there in the Docker Compose file. User is my user, and of course the URL is JDBC Postgres QL localhost my database. All right, good. This is also, like I said, it's gonna benefit from virtual threads. We'll enable that here in Spring Boot 3.2 and later, using Java 21, of course. And now we get to the actual work of designing our application. Let's suppose we have two tables, customers and a one-to-many relationship with orders. I designed that using an object in Kotlin. In Kotlin, objects are singleton classes. They exist only once per JVM. There's only one instance, you can't create a new one of them. Uh, and they're just a design pattern made formal by the language itself. And the, 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 pa the strategy, the pattern here is you create a singleton table object defining the layout of your table. This is like JPA annotations or Hibernate config or Spring Data annotations. It's the way you map your Java objects or in this case your Kotlin objects to the table schema. I think this is really quite nice so it's because it's type safe as you'll see in a second. So we're gonna, the, the other pattern is you have plural object names. So uh, int ID table, okay, customers. There's my design, okay. Now I don't have to design the ID field because it's implied in the uh, base class there. There is a base table type that you can extend in, in which case you have to explicitly specify the primary key. I do have a name field, however, and that's gonna be text and so I'll des describe that here, name. And uh, you know, you can do all sorts of things. You can also make it nullable. Oh, why would we do that? So we won't, but okay, there's my customers, great. And what about the orders? Well, again, I wanna have a one-to-many relationship, but I have to def describe the table first. Uh, it's going to be another int ID table, okay, orders. And here we'll have a SKU, which is text as well. So SKU, great. And we wanna have a pointer, to the uh, you know owner in the relationship, the uh, owner node, uh, the customers there. So we'll say references customers, passing a, a pointer to the schema, to the table object. Now we have our basic mapping. Let's actually begin to see how to use Kotlin Expose. We'll just create a little command line runner here. So class demo application runner. 
implement that member. There we go. All right. Good stuff. So first things first, how do we get our schema? I've been designing the Java, the Java or Kotlin objects rather to, to map my tables to objects, but I, you know, what tables? <laughs> Who's going to do that? Normally, if you know my demos, I've normally got source main resources, schema.sql, and then I just describe the schema in there. It's fine. I want to get exposed to do more of the work for me. So I use schema utils to create the orders and the customers. Easy. Now, of course, this is a data access operation. It happens within the scope of a transaction, which is to say, I need to have a transaction. There is a mechanism in the expose library for, do, for dealing with transactions, but it's separate from springs. That said, the Spring Boot starter bridges that. So all I need to do is to inject or is to define and demarcate my types as transactional in the normal way, and it'll automatically bridge with the exposed transaction demarcation mechanism. So this will now run, you know, in the context of a transaction. Don't have to do anything else, it just works. And uh, let's just see if that works actually. So let's connect to the SQL database. Nice thing here, IntelliJ has this little icon here. I can use that to create a connection. Great, go look at the tables, Hit refresh. There's nothing there yet. Let's re restart the application or just start the application. All right, what about now? There we are, two tables, customers and orders. Great, now we have our data. We know that the schema is connecting and we know that we have basic, you know, it's able to start up and connect to the database and do something with it. So we're already making good progress and we haven't really done any hard work. We've written whatever, seven lines of code here, I mean, it's truly nothing. Okay, or eight lines of code, I should say. Okay, now let's say I wanna reset the database each time. I'll say delete all, right? And I'll say uh, delete that as well. Good, so now I'm resetting the database. That way we start from, from uh, empty tables and we don't get any weird duplicate data as I rerun the example. I like that. I want to insert a customer. So I'll say customers.insert and get ID. So that'll return the ID that we want to then match later on. And the way you insert it is it's going to, in this Lambda, this is a Lambda, believe it or not, uh, and I'm passing in a callback, right? And the Lambda actually has a insert statement parameter, right? And so you can actually be explicit about it like that. And if you want, you can then index into the insert statement by using the fields in that table. Right, so customers.name equals, let's say, Josh. Okay, now of course, this is hideous, so I'm gonna use the implicit parameter there. I'll get rid of that and just call it it. And I don't need the parentheses because it's the only parameter, it's the only parameter being passed into the lambda is, into the into to the method is a lambda, so I can just use the lambda enclosure. Okay, good, so now I've got that and it's gonna return the ID of that newly created customer. Great, now I wanna insert some orders, okay? So let's say I have a set of, UID to string, UUID random to string. Actually, you know, I don't even need the to string, do I? I can just cleanly map to string. And then I wanna, for each one of those, I wanna insert a record into the database. So I'm gonna say UUID equals it, right? And I'll say orders dot insert statement, right? And then we'll say it orders dot skew equals UUID, right? Good. And the customer ID, is equal to the customer ID. All right, very good. So now we've got this, we've got two orders being inserted for that customer ID. I have one customer here, but um, let's say I wanted to have a bunch of them. Well, I could go here, names equals set of Josh, or actually let's just do Madura, Stefan, Olga, okay? Dot split dot map dot for each. And let's just copy and paste this code that we looked at earlier. And there, val name equals it. Okay, there we go, very good. So now I've got a bunch of names that I'm gonna insert into the database when the application starts up, in addition to my one where I'm keeping the ID there, okay? And the reason I wanna do that is I can then do a search for it. I can say, okay, let's do a, this. in, in this case, you can see I'm doing a uh, insert, I'm doing a for each, I'm doing all these DDL updates, but I wanna do a for each now. So how do I get all the records? Well, I can just say select all, and then print out the results, right? So print out, or I can just print out IT, customers.name, right? There's a, the name, and maybe I want the ID as well. Okay, very good. So there's the results, that's a select all. Let's print out a little line here, just to make sure we don't get confused. And then what about, what about a qualified query, like a select all with a predicate, with a where clause? Well, I can do that pretty easily as well. Here, I'm gonna say, 
I want to find all the records where a, a given name matches. I'm going to say select all the records where customers.name equals Josh, right? And is, so we'll say val first, okay, dot first, and I'll say uh, give me the uh, customers.id dot value so I can dereference the actual thing I care about, the integer, and I can say is customer ID the same as the where clause results, right? Uh, and we can just dereference that, so customer ID equals first. All right, let's run this program and see what we get. Four equals four. Yes, so we found the result by running this very simple. We wrote a where clause, but we did it using TypeSafe Kotlin, which is really, really nice. And the code, I think, is really clean as well. So look at that. Very, very easy to understand. And it's the same one as we got back when we inserted the result earlier, too. Okay, so that's clearly working. We're able to insert a bunch of data. Let's check out the customer data. There we go. We got four records, just as we expected. And we got the results back. Okay, now, what if I want to get the orders for the customers? Well, this would be very easy. Let's create another method here, orders. And I'm going to do a inner join. I'll say customers inner join orders. And then we're going to do a select all. And we'll do another where clause. And we'll say orders dot customer ID equals. And then we want to find the uh, customer ID that we inserted earlier, right? So, and then we can map each of those to orders if we wanted to, and we can map the result that we have from the customers as well. So let's actually try that. So now we've got the orders and we have the customer. Now you might be wondering, well, what about our lonely uh, uh, domain model? We haven't even described one yet. We've just been using the exposed API to query and interact with our database. But of course, you're probably not gonna wanna pass around result rows and that's okay. You know, The idea is that you would do this work and then map it very easily right, to the domain model of your choice. So here is a map method, just like you'd expect in any Kotlin sequence. So I can create a data class customer val id int, right? Val name string, great. And there's another one here called order val skew, right? And uh, this will have a uh, a list, an, a, an array, a list or something of orders, right? So we'll say array list of, very good. It's optional. So now I can map this. So what I'll do is I'll say map this to orders. So uh, order, passing in uh, it customers dot id, it customers dot name, okay? And I want to dereference the value here. All right, great. So now I've got a, a bunch of orders. Same thing for the customers down here, right? I can do map customer, it customers dot id, it customers dot name. Okay, same thing. I'm going to dereference the value. And now I get first, and I can just, you know, I can keep that there. And we don't need this test anymore. So the first thing I get back from this is now a T, which is the customer, right? So now I can return this customer afterwards. Here we go. And then pass in that array of orders as well. And so now if somebody gets this complex object and we print it out, we see the customers and their orders, right? And it's in terms of our domain model, no hint or trace of anything from JetBrains Exposed, however nice that API is. It doesn't leak, it's nice and clean, minimally invasive, and the compiler is watching our back at every turn. Because we, as soon as we do something, we have the compiler helping us validate that we're doing the right thing, because we have these nice type safe APIs. I love it, I love this kind of thing. Now, there is one more thing. It's a really nice integration, clearly, but I want to make this work in a Gravium native image context. And I'll be honest with you, friends, I've got a very outstanding issue with the JetBrains Exposed project here that opened that I opened up back in 2021, June 2021, back when we had Spring Native. Now this is the precursor to the AOT support that you've and hopefully enjoyed since Spring Boot 3.0 came out in November of 2022. That AOT engine is GA. It's been there for years now, like literally more than a year and a half, and it's very good. So I'm glad that they didn't act on this initial push a year, you know, in 2021, I left the issue saying, hey, what about Spring Native? Let's support that. And then I got a response atypically, because usually they're very quick to respond, a year later, almost in 2022, in April 17th. And somebody said, basically, uh, they're, you know, interested. And uh, and then I just responded to them about an hour ago. <laughs> so we're playing tag and, and posted some working code. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you, dear reader or dear watcher, that this is comprehensive support that I've tested in every possible scenario, but it works for me. So hopefully it works for you too. So let's just uh, 
paste this code in. This is just Spring AOT, right? The component model. I've done a whole Spring Tips video on that. I won't rehash all that right now, but basically I'm telling the Gravium native image compiler via the Spring AOT component model that uh, this is a, you know, these types are being reflected on and that these class path resources down here are going to be loaded. Okay, so I need to tell Spring about this new uh, extra information by registering it as a as a hint. Okay, import runtime hints. Okay, voila, there we go. So now let's compile this as a GraalVM native image. Now, obviously, this will take a while. So uh, sit back and you know pour, drink some water, and I'll see you on the other side of the compilation. All right, they're compiled in about 35 seconds. Let's go to the build directory here. Native, native compile. There's our binary with the uh, runtime, the native libraries, the uh, database access, the JDBC support, all that kind of stuff. Exposed, the Kotlin language, all that stuff is there. Let's run it. Okay, there we go. It ran lightning fast. Look at that. There's all of our records. There's all the data. It ran in 75 thousandths of a second or 98 thousandths of a second. Okay, here it is. Here's our application. 74 megabytes. That includes the JRE, the runtime, everything like that. Let's go ahead and run it. Exposed. There we go, 47 thousandth of a second, or actually 58 thousandth of a second. All the results come back. We've got the uh, customers and orders and all that kind of stuff. Good stuff, this worked, right? We have a nice, super scalable, because of virtual threads, GraalVM ready, really clean, type safe, data centric application in very few lines of code. I love this. This is a great example of different communities working together where the result is more than the sum of its parts. I quite like this. I hope you got something out of this, my friends. Thanks for listening, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. I find the code on github.com forward slash spring dash tips, and you can look for the Kotlin exposed GitHub repository. And um, as always, see you next time.